I'm on the ground at the Giro d'Italia in the hunt for hot tech. I've managed to immerse myself within all of the teams so that I can, well, hopefully find for you all the latest tech that they're using and secret weapons that they're going to hope are going to give them an advantage over their rivals. So, uh, well, better get to it. Oh, and by the way, if you want to watch the Giro, which I absolutely recommend you do, brilliant race, it's live, uninterrupted and ad-free on GCN+. Although uh, territory restrictions do apply. Cool. Right. Let's do it. Wow. Look at this paint job. This is incredible. So I think it's fair to say that Team EF Education Easy Post have won at this year's Giro when it comes to the team bikes. So this is a completely custom paint job that's been put on and it's a pretty cool story about it. So the first thing to understand is that the team has to sort of paint their bikes and wear different coloured jerseys uh, for the Giro d'Italia because their normal team colour is pink. And so it's mandated by the organisers that that's too similar to the Maglia Rosa. And so for their jerseys, they've uh, had Rafa make some uh, recycled jerseys out of offcuts of clothing as a sort of nod to being more sustainable and environmentally friendly. So they've got these kind of like patchwork jerseys. And then that's mirrored in the paint job that's on the bike. These bikes have been made from uh, recycled paint. That's the special paint job on them. And every single one on the team is unique. This one belongs to Nielsen Paulus. Uh, but it's really cool. It's kind of like this tie-dye effect on there. But yeah, it's just they just pop and they stand out. And I just love when cycling is colourful. I don't like it when everyone's kit's the same and everyone's in a black jersey. So I first saw the, the Lab 71 Cannondales at uh, the UAE Tour. And I mean, I, I really do think they look fantastic. The, the seat post in particular is so thin. And on that, you, you can see they've got a special modification. It's a, a custom made 3D printed um, a number mount that they can attach the race number onto to keep it nice and, and aero and out the way. And I also like the fact that these bikes have a threaded bottom bracket now. Big departure than the uh, press fit ones that you used to find on all Cannondales. And other thing of note, they're, they're running the new Vittoria Corsa Pros as well, like many of the teams here, and in 28 front and rear. I've also spotted here a really cool custom TT bike that I have to show you. Um, but it looks like the weather might be about to change, <laughs> which might be because I filmed it yesterday. There's a lot of time trialing in this year's Giro, and I've got one of the most striking time trial bikes, the whole peloton. This is the Ecuadorian national champions paint job of Jonathan Caicedo from EF Education Easy Post. Proper cool with the, the yellow, the blue, and the red. And it's actually got like a little kind of textured pattern in it and a little sort of Ecuadorian symbol on the top tube there and his name on the, on the seat stay. The most striking thing about this bike, apart from the paint job, is the size of it. He's a diminutive chap, just 164 centimetres, according to Pro Cycling Stats. And the, the head tube on the front of his bike here is absolutely tiny. It's, about, it's less than half the length of that on the standard Super Slice that a lot of his teammates have. Um, that said, though, it's still got a massive chain ring. 60 tooth, that massive vision chain ring. And then it's cool that he's got some aero bling on there as well. So you've got the ceramic speed, uh, aero pulley cage system, and then also 170, 170 millimeter cranks with the Wahoo aero speed play pedals on. A couple of things I feel compelled to point out are the fact that the bottle cage on there, that's not very aero, but that's because this bike's in training mode. So when they're doing the recon in the morning, the bikes will often have the round bottles in. And then for this first time trial of the Giro, which is very short, uh, they probably won't run a bottle at all, the mechanics tell me. So that'll be off once the riders have done the recon. Also, we've got the Wahoo Element Rome on the front here. You probably use a smaller element bolt uh, when you're actually racing. Um, the chain as well, I'm just going to do wax chain check. So a close inspection of that chain, I'm pretty sure that's waxed. Gains. Other cool details, we've got this really nice Vision uh, setup on the bar, these custom bars that Vision um, does individual to every rider on the team. So there's all different shapes in the back of the team truck. And they've got this nice grip stuff on there as well. Just, it, I, I wish you could experience what I'm feeling right now. That really does feel rather good. And a cheeky little gain I've noticed on the risers here, they've got some good old black electrical tape just to hold the cables in place and just make everything a little bit more aero. That's a, a little hack I do on, on my TT bike too. God, I'm glad I got something right. <laughs> I 
I'm over at Intermarche Circus 1T and they've got some seriously cool stuff going on here. So they ride their beautiful Cube uh, C68 Lightnings and uh, they're really aero looking bikes. They have an incredible paint job this year. So you've got this sort of nice textured blue uh, with loads of sort of depth to it. It's, it's got a paint effect on it, a bit like what we see on the Astana bikes this year. Um, but this is a darker blue, and it's really thin as well because you can see the, the checkerboard carbon weave through the paint when you look at it at certain angles. So, yeah, really thin. Presumably that means it's not adding much weight. Um, but on here as well, there's some like things that I've never seen before. So on these wheels, which are from Neyman, there's no valve. Where's the valve? There's no valve. <laughs> Look, none of them. And that's the same on their TT bikes, their road wheels. No valve. Here's where the valve is. Um, and there's a little cover. Now, what that actually is, the mechanics have shown us, they have a special system. So they're running their tyres tubeless, but with a Schrader valve adapter that's inside the wheel. This little cap comes off, and then they put in a special doobery into the wheel and uh, then they can inflate them really, really quick. It's really easy, you don't have to screw it on. Um, Schrader's back on road bikes, there you go, you've seen it here first. Now, the advantage of this is, well, you, you just remove uh, a tiny little bit of uh, rotational drag out of the wheel. Uh, the valve, actually, when you've got a long valve, that does actually create drag as the wheel rotates. So removing it, it's a teeny tiny marginal gain they all add up um, and then the other interesting thing is the the tires so they're running continental gp 5000s uh, 28 millimeters front and rear but they're not the normal ones they're running the tt version which has the same it looks the same but it's slightly thinner it's slightly lighter it doesn't last as long but it's a performance gain it, it saves a few watts over the standard version so again looking for any gains and wax chain patrol yep they've waxed their chains good job Good full gold star to, to the mechanics of Intermarche. Wax chain patrol, the bikes of Cofidis on top of the team car, they're clearly not using wax chains. Look at that, wet lube. Look how dirty it's got just on this morning's training ride. When will they learn? Over at Bora Handsgrower, they've got some really cool modifications on their TT bike. So this is the specialised S-Works shiv of Bob Youngles. Now, if you look at his cockpit here, that's definitely taking advantages of the changes in the UCI rules, allowing you to have a higher angle on your extensions there. And this is a custom bar setup from Speed Bar NL. So you may remember Speed Bar, it's been on the channel, um, the guy that creates those. But yeah, fully customised. And there's some really, really nice hacks. So the mechanics here, what they've done is they've made some little shifters in the end of his extensions here, and they've put grip tape even on the buttons. It's really cool. And they've had to put them here underneath because there's no space in how Bob has his hand position to put them on the ends of the extensions there. But that's not all. They've got additional shifters on the base bar. And this is a really neat idea, actually, because the uh, base bar shifters for uh, Shimano now only have a single button, which means that you can't upshift and downshift like having the two buttons on your normal, say, road bike shifter that are on left and right. So they've introduced another button uh, just neatly tucked away under there and on each side so that you can have those two buttons to change up and down with the front and the rear. Other cool thing, we've got a 58 tooth Shimano ring on there, which is, well, absolutely massive. And a uh, nice little detail is uh, it's got special Shimano bolt covers that go on it to make it line up and integrate nicely and not have that sort of sudden harsh edge on it. And uh, another detail that I've seen that's different from a lot of the teams is they're running 160 rotors uh, on the front on their TT bikes, whereas um, a lot of teams are switching for the slightly smaller 140. I'm uh, joined by Pete Royakers, who's an R&D expert for Team DSM. I've got something very exciting for you here because this is a brand new bike that's breaking cover at the Giro, the brand new Scott Plasma RC TT bike. What can you tell us about it, Pete? Um, first of all, we were very happy that we could uh, share our, our, our bike fit uh, input uh, with, with, with Scott. Yeah, we had really good ideas how we wanted uh, a cockpit. Um, we call it a semi-custom cockpit. It's got those... The, the little hand positions rotate. Yeah, you can do it in width, you can do it with an angle, in height of course, then uh, in inclination, in the, in the degrees, and then here in the end, so you can put the inclination up, that it matches your forearm, but then you can do the bend 
as, as you want and it still matches your pools. Well, they look absolutely incredible. Thank you very much. This very nice bike is the Aurum Magma. It's the standard team issue of Team Yolo Cometa, Alberto Contador's uh, development team. And it stands out to me because it's, well, it's pretty much the only bike I've found so far in the Giro d'Italia Peloton that has that traditional flat kind of top tube and seat stays going and meeting the top tube on the seat tube junction. Everything has drop seat stays in that familiar silhouette now. Also, round handlebar and standard stem, not an integrated one-piece. But the other thing that stands out is the tyres. So they've got the brand new uh, Vittoria Corsa Pro on there, which has just been unveiled at this year's Euro and is said to be a very good tyre. But every other example of it I've seen is being run tubeless. Now, this is the only team that I've found that are running tubular tyres on their road bikes here at the Giro, uh, on these rather nice Envy wheels. But yeah, tubulars are still alive in the peloton. Uh, waxed chain patrol though um no that's uh that's got normal lube on it that one though it's very clean uh, and they are running a, a ceramic speed oversized pulley wheel system one of the byrain victorious bikes stands out amongst all the others i mean i'm a big fan of the paint job on their bikes but this one is something special because it's the Japanese national champions bike of Yuki Arashiro. And so you've got the rising sun on the head tube here. You've also got uh, some little custom graphics. So there's a little dog uh, with a Japanese sun uh, on it and, and some Japanese writing underneath it. Although I don't speak Japanese or read or write it. Uh, but Google Translate does. So I'm just going to see what it says. Go Yuki Go. Is, is what it says. Oh, the marvels of modern technology. Uh, but there's some other nice little details on this. So at the back here, um, the mechanics have done a really cool little job of bonding on a carbon fibre number holder. So really saving weight and just, well, it's just nice and neat and tidy. It's cool. And then we've got tubeless tyres, as is the standard now. So 28 millimetres front and rear. Although the Continental tyres are coming up really wide. I mean, they look almost like 30s, to be honest, um, on the Vision wheels. A couple of other cool things. The, the white handlebar looks really smart. It's Vision, but it's custom painted to match the front of the bike. And with these white bar tape, that is... I mean, when you're a pro, you get your bar tape changed whenever you want by the, by the mechanics. So that's really smart. Um, and on the back, wax chain patrol. No, that's been, that's got lube on it. That is, uh, yeah, that one isn't waxed. This is the Colnago V4 RS of UAE Team Emirates uh, leader. Well, one of their leaders here at the, at the, uh, at the Giro, Jao Almeida. Uh, now, I've, I've been taking some measurements, right? And just keen, because things have changed a lot over the years. So first up, the bars, like we've spoken about, bars have got narrower. I've measured these centre to centre, they're 38 centimetres, end to end, they're coming out at 41 centimetres. So pretty narrow, but not the narrowest. But the thing that stands out to me is the tyres, how wide they are. So these are 28 millimetre Conti 5000s, but when they're paired with these NV 4.5 rims, which have a massive internal width, they are ballooning out massive. I mean, the wheel is designed for this, but I mean, they are like, they're coming out like 32s. They are ginormous. Something that I've not seen before too on the wheels is the Envy logo, which is kind of like in this brushed metal effect, which I think that's new because I've not seen it. And it, it's nice because it matches up with the brushed metal Colnago logo that's on the down tube. We've got a 5440 on the front um, for general use. That's pretty big. But Jao obviously feels he can get away with that because that's paired with the 1134 Jura Ace cassette. Oh, it really is cool to see like all of the bikes here. And just as a general trend, and the, and the Intermarche bikes really do sort of exemplify this, bars are getting narrower. I mean, these are all pretty much 38. Um, and chain rings... Are getting bigger it makes sense especially when you start pairing them with the the 34 cassettes on the back that most of the riders run now um 
because you've got still got that easy gear, but you've got the bigger gear uh, for more efficient chain line um, and also just the higher speeds of the Peloton, which which they need to. So, you know, 55 tooth chain rings seem to be the standard option here on, uh, on Intermarche, which is... Well, it's massive, isn't it? And apparently sometimes they run 58s, um, according to the mechanics. But yeah, if you've, uh, if you've enjoyed this video and give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. Let us know what your favorite thing is that you've seen in it and which one of the bikes that you like the best. If you could have any of the bikes that we've seen, let us know in the comments which one you'd pick. And um, well, also that one on the end there is Lawrence Rex's bike. He gets a special mention because he is a good boy. He uploaded his bike into the bike vault and he got a super nice.